Good evening. Welcome to our fifth annual Women in Business fundraiser. Of course, this is the first time we're doing this event virtually. So we thank you so much for showing up and supporting us under these unique circumstances, no matter how Zoom fatigued you might be. My name is Monica Jansen. I served as the Women in Business Initiative Chair last year, and this is my fourth and final year on the board. Now, of course, the board has evolved a lot since I first joined, but one thing that hasn't changed is our commitment to supporting female business students through two need and merit-based scholarships every year. During my time on the board, I've been very fortunate to connect with so many wonderful Mason students. They are a remarkable, remarkable group, and it's a pleasure to support them. Of course, tonight's event would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors and partners, so I would like to recognize them. Of course, first up is Vienna Vintner. Victor Mendez and his wonderful team have been with us from the beginning. They have always collaborated with us to host the wine tasting portion of the fundraiser and of course support our uh, scholarship fund. Vienna Vintner is a locally owned and operated shop in the heart of Vienna. Thank you so much, Victor. And Atlantic Union Bank. This community bank's roots go all the way back to 1902 in Virginia. They attribute their longevity and success to always putting their customers first. Thank you so much for your support, Atlantic Union Bank. Now, besides enjoying some fantastic wines, which I know we're all looking forward to, we will celebrate the winners of the Wibby Awards, which will be hosted by Nicole Washington, partner of George Mason University President Gregory Washington, and an accomplished executive and female entrepreneur in her own right. Tonight, you'll also hear stories from our student scholars, and you will be invited to donate to our scholarship fund via text throughout the evening. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Now, I would like to kick it over to Tanya Chagnon, the current chair of the Women in Business Initiative. Tanya is owner of Delightful Plans and a major advocate of fundraising and support of our student scholarships. Welcome, Tanya. Thank you, Monica. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our tour of Italy. We are excited to be able to shimmy just a titch and have this event virtually this year. You know I'm hating that we cannot be together in person and having so much fun. But I have not a doubt that our impact will make a huge difference for future business school students. For our friends joining us tonight, the Women in Business Initiative, or WIBI, is an advisory board of professional women who represent numerous industries. Our board serves students, alumni, and the Mason community. We have one simple goal, and that is to open doors for female business students and alumni through a variety of programs. This is my third year involved with WIBI, and I couldn't be more proud of the work this group has done. We weren't able to do any of the fun things. We couldn't get in front of classes, we couldn't do the luncheons, we couldn't do the get togethers and all of the things. But what we could do is we raised enough money to increase our scholarship amounts for next year. This group is simply amazing. Wibby was founded in 2014 by two women who saw the value of mentorship, strong women and student scholarships. Since our inception, we have hosted networking, mentorship, etiquette, fundraising, panel discussion and speaking events. Wibby is proud to routinely provide speakers for the School of Business program called Leaders in the Classroom. This is such a great opportunity to share real life experiences with students at the invitation of their professors. Two years ago, we created the Wibby Awards. These were made to recognize and honor women and women owned businesses that are creating impact, innovation and inspiration. This year we have added a new award and we are so excited that Nicole Washington our George Mason University presidential partner will be assisting us with announcing the awards and we are thrilled to welcome her to our Wibby world. Finally, and most importantly for this evening, we are here to fundraise for the Women in Business Scholarship Endowment. The Wibby board and our generous supporters have raised over $135,000 for the Women in Business Scholarship Endowment, which was established by one of our founding members. Each and every year moving forward, we are super excited to be able to award merit and need-based scholarships to two female business students at the undergrad and graduate level. 
We are continually inspired by what these students accomplish in the face of long odds. Thank you again for joining us tonight. I truly hope you have so much fun and I'm excited for you now to meet both of our 2020, 2021 student scholars. Hi everyone, my name is Celia Miranda. I'm a sophomore here at George Mason and I'm a recipient of this year's Women in Business Student Scholarship. I'm currently an ISOM major also known as Information Systems or Operations Management. My current career aspirations is to move to Seattle, Washington and become a database manager or analyst at some private company there, just because I really enjoy taking MIS classes as well as ISOM electives. Um, I'm really passionate in um, FBLA. I'm part of FBLA. I was a secretary last semester, and I really enjoy working with other people who are also business majors. Uh, I also really love HSA or Hispanic Student Association, which is where people of Latin or Hispanic heritage and other people can come together and really just have a good time. Um, this scholarship has really helped me focus in those areas as well as think about having a minor in government contracting that is really popular right now. And I've really just been able to focus on my studies and yeah, have time to do that. And I wanted to thank the Women in Business Initiative members who raise funds and awareness for the scholarship e each year and thank those attending tonight's annual fundraiser and supporting students like me and if you're joining tonight, you should really consider donating because it really helps students um, in the school who are trying to get their degree. I just wanted to take some time to thank the Women in Business Initiative members who raise funds and awareness for the scholarship every year. I would also like to thank all the attendees of tonight's fundraiser and supporting students just like me. If you are joining tonight, please consider donating funds because at the end of the day, you're making an impact on someone's future. I know I look forward to giving back someday, maybe by donating when I get a job and advocating for women in business. Thank you everyone and have a great night. Hello, my name is Christina Snyder and I am the proud recipient of the 2021 Women in Business Initiative Student Scholarship. I'm a student in the MBA program at George Mason University with a focus in project management and in leadership. I'm a dreamer, I am a doer, I am a starter, and I work hard to see big, bold ideas come to life. I am also an assistant professor of physician assistant studies. I'm part of a team that is working to develop a PA program that is especially designed to educate PA students from underserved communities so that those graduates can then return to those communities as well-educated healthcare providers, lifting up entire communities by providing for their healthcare needs. This program is new and it's in its developing stages. There's no other program quite like this in the country. We're building everything from scratch. It's risky, but with the right amount of effort and planning, we will succeed. We're in our final stages of program development now. That's where the MBA comes in. My MBA classes have provided mission critical skills and knowledge that are directly applicable to this endeavor. Your support in awarding the scholarship has helped to lighten my financial load. And more importantly, it's provided me with the affirmation and confidence to continue this important work. By supporting and empowering me, your scholarship award actually affects dozens of my future students, and they in turn can go out into the communities and affect thousands more in a positive way. I'd like to thank the Women in Business Initiative members who have raised funds for this scholarship, and I'd like to thank those who are attending tonight's fundraiser. For those in attendance, please consider donating to this important scholarship. Historically, women have been underrepresented both in business and in education, particularly in the top spots. This scholarship is a way to lift up women and help them and encourage them to do great things in this world. Certainly, the scholarship has made a tremendous impact on me both personally and professionally. Thank you for your continued support. Good evening. We're all here tonight to support the future female business leaders, as well as our current George Mason University students. We all know how much our students love to text as do we. So let's show them tonight we're capable of doing it and being generous. You've heard stories throughout the evening about the impact of our Wibby scholarship. And I'd like to take a moment just to share the fact that I also was able to attend college from generous donations and scholarships. So please take a moment now to pull out your cell phone 
and text for Wibby. That's four W I B I to four one four four four. You will receive a text message reply with a link to donate. Please click on that link and fill out the prompts on the form. Also, please consider giving a gift of any size because any help that we can give in this time is valuable and support is always needed. Again, thank you so much for your support and continued support of future female business leaders. So please text for WIBI for Wibby to 41444. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Hello, everybody. My name is Victor Mendez. Um, very, very happy to be a part of this once again for our fifth year here with George Mason University Women in Business Initiative. Uh, we are excited to have everybody here. Of course, we would love to be doing this in person, but Zoom will do tonight. Um, but thrilled and very, very excited to uh, lead this tasting and uh, also host with um, Amanda Page. Uh, and also Violetta um, with uh, just some beautiful wines. And um, this is gonna be an exciting evening. Um, Amanda Page um, is the Vice President of Sales for Banville Wines. I've known Amanda for uh, probably about a dozen years. She's always considered my uh, traveling wife. We've traveled to Spain and South Africa a few times together and done a lot of wine purchasing. and. Um, have done business together. So we're thrilled to sort of have Amanda as a part of this. I think she's definitely one of the most leading uh, individuals, especially a female uh, here in the industry and uh, just excited to have her. And of course, uh, Violanta, uh, we're excited to have her join in uh, all the way from Tuscany, Italy. It's a little bit late for her. So I believe it's about 12, 15 or 12, 30 now for her, but I think she's gonna do well. Um, but again, we're super excited. Um, I think everybody should have all of their food, I'm sure, probably unpacked and ready to go. Um, open the red wines um, now, just give them some time to breathe. Um, we're obviously going to start with the Pinot Grigio first. Um, you only need one glass, I think, if you want to have multiple glasses, that's great. If you want to have a wine a glass for your white wine and then also another glass for your red, you can do it. But you can do a progressive tasting from lightest to heaviest. But, um, uh, but again, very, very uh, thankful. And by the way, thank you guys very much for the nomination to the award for the Ambassador of the Year. It was a, to be honestly, it was, a, it was a big honor, but it couldn't be possible without all of the hard work through all of your members at uh, George Mason. Katie Parks has been uh, phenomenal to work with over the last four or five years. Monica, everybody really has done an amazing job. So. We're so excited to team up with George Mason University, but um, I'm gonna turn it over to Amanda Page really quick, and she's gonna tell you guys a little bit about um, our hosts and, uh, and some of the lines. And uh, I think throughout the evening as well, um, you guys can sort of comment in the boxes below, and we'll uh, answer some questions that you guys have uh, throughout the evening. But um, I'm gonna turn it over to Amanda, and we're looking forward to having a wonderful time with you guys tonight. So thank you guys all for joining us. Great. Thanks for the introduction, Victor. And I can't wait till we, uh, I can be your traveling wife again, and we can go to Italy this time together. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for having us. Um, I think for both Violante and I, it's quite the honor um, to join you guys and the future of women in business. For me personally, I've worked in the food and wine industry my whole life since I was 15, primarily restaurants and stores and um, as you can imagine, we're quite underrepresented in this industry. Um, so it's really quite an honor to be here and also for working for Banville Wine Merchants as well. So I've been with Banville Wine Merchants for almost four years now. Um, as Victor mentioned, I am the Vice President of Sales for the Mid-Atlantic region. Um, so my office is based here in DC. Uh, we are based uh, in New York, however. 
originally started out as an import company, um, but now we do self-distribution um, in a few markets. And I just wanted to share, um, I'm gonna screen share real quick, just a picture of our owner. And I'll talk to you briefly about the Pinot Grigio as well. And then I'll turn it over to our main event, which is Violante. And I'm always happy to see her and thank you for her since it is quite late, but uh, she seems like she's had some espresso. So <laughs> we'll be all right. Um, so here's just um, kind of a quick overview. So this is Leah Tolaney Danville, who is the owner of our import company. Um, and this is with her father, who actually just passed away um, in 2020. Uh, but he owns a winery in Tuscany as well, Tolaney Estates. Um, and that was kind of one of the main impetus for starting an import company. So uh, Leah's here. She started her importer business in 2004. And when you import into the States, you then need a distributor to sell your products for you. Um, so you import and then kind of turn it over to another distributor, uh, which is good and bad. You get a little more exposure, but you also lose a little bit of control over your products. So in 2011, uh, she decided to open up her own distribution company as well. So we self-distribute in New York, New Jersey, um, here in the DMV area. And then um, most recently in Oregon as well. So we do cover the other states just through other distributors, but you have a little bit more um, control uh, in the areas that you self-distribute. But the philosophy is, you know, always working with family estates. We're not a portfolio that likes to kind of have everything and anything. Um, it's really important. We are a family business um, to also work with family estates as well um, that share the same values as us. That's the best way for a symbiotic relationship. Um, the heart of our portfolio is Italy and always will be Italy, um, but we have since expanded um, France, I would say second. And then we have a uh, kind of sprinkling of some new world, New Zealand, um, uh, Argentina as well. And we have some domestic things um, also. So I picked the Pinot Grigio tonight for your first kind of aperitivo warm up wine. Um, is actually a private label that Leah herself has a hand in. Um, so while her family's estate is in Tuscany, uh, we do a few different private labels that are exclusive to our company. Um, so you guys should all have the beautiful Dipinti Pinot Grigio. Um, I love showing this Pinot Grigio because a lot of times people have a preconceived notion that Pinot Grigio is just kind of light, citrusy, just kind of easy drinking, but this is a Pinot Grigio with a bit more to it. So we work with the co-op that's in Trentino, so way up north in Italy. Um, and this one, they're sourcing the fruit from the Dolomiti region. So very, very high elevation here. The vineyards go um, all the way from sea level, all the way up to about 2,500 feet above sea level, which is quite high. Um, but the benefit of that is you get a little bit more complexity in your fruit. Um, maximum sun exposure, but then also the temperatures are nice and cool. So it helps kind of retain the acidity. So you get this nice kind of rounded mouthfeel to it, but also this kind of freshness um, as well. Um, each of the labels, we're seeing just the Pinot Grigio, but if you ever see the lineup, um, and I think I put it in your notes as well, um, basically each painting was chosen to depict the life of, um, in the vineyard. Um, so they are commissioned by a local artist um, in that area and personally selected by Leah as well. So I hope you guys enjoy. I don't want to take up too much time because as many times as I have had the benefit to work with Violante here in the U.S., I can hear their story over and over again. I love their wines and I love their estate. Um, one of the benefits of my job is being able to travel, not last year so much, but the previous year, um, I did get to go and visit their estate and stay there. And it's one thing to read and hear the story, but when you're there, you really feel the passion and everything about it. So I'm really excited to revisit the estate and the lines with you all. So I'm gonna turn it over to Violante and we'll see some beautiful pictures of the winery and the estate and just hear everything about her family and how they are one of the leading women owned businesses in uh, Tuscany. So on to you Violante. Thank you, Amanda. It's a big honor for, for me to, to be with you. <laughs> of course, it was different when I, I could come and I miss my trips in the uh, in United States uh, a lot. But I will do my best to tell you something about us, waiting for the opportunity to have you all here in Tuscany. 
and uh, I'm sure that uh, it will be something that uh, uh, will push you to, to come soon. So uh, I don't know if we can share some uh, uh, pictures. Okay, so as you can see, me and my mom and uh, uh, the picture down me and my mom is representing a group. This is not uh, a family, could be, could be a family, but the reality is that uh, this is our team. My family uh, is in Montalcino from more than 400 years. And uh, in 1998, my grandmother decided to divide her properties uh, between my mother and uh, my uncle. So my mom arrived at uh, Fattoria, um, at uh, Casato Prime Donne, that was Casato, and that's all. And now the name is Casato Prime Donne. Prime Donne because we are the first uh, winery in Italy in which uh, only women can work. And this is not a discrimination message. <laughs> But uh, the reality is that when my mom was looking for a, an enologist, a good student that was able to uh, do uh, the best to produce a good Sangiovese in Montalcino, it was impossible to find someone. Doesn't matter if it was a man or a woman, but we, we were looking for someone good, a good student. The answer was, I'm sorry, it's impossible to find a good student for you. Until when she tried again asking for a woman. So the answer was, if you are sure that you want a lady to manage your wineries, they are the best of the class nobody wants to employ women. So it was 1998, not many years ago. And she decided to take the opportunity to do something different. That's all. To demonstrate that you, if you want to produce a good wine, you need to be intelligent, not to be very strong. So, of course, it's nature to produce good wine, so we are in the northern part of Montalcino. All our vineyards are around Casato Prime Donne, and we have uh, 17 hectares uh, in uh, Casato Prime Donne and uh, uh, 16 in Fattoria del Colle at the moment. Uh, the team is the same. So composed of uh, the, the ladies that you can see down here. And um, Margherita, Antonella, Deborah, they are uh, people that are helping us to sell, to produce, to do marketing, to do communication. And uh, uh, of course, the team is the same in two uh, properties. Uh, the owner is my mom, and uh, today we will present you the uh, two wines that are coming from uh, Montalcino uh, for the Rosso di Montalcino, and Fattoria del Colle uh, is, the, wi is the, um, the winery where we produce uh, um, um, Chianti Superiore. So, uh, I don't know if we can go on with the pictures. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we are working very hard in the vineyards, as I told you. So we pick all our grapes by hand. Uh, we are organic. So we received the, the uh, organic certification in uh, 2018. 
but the reality uh, is that we are following the organic rules from many years before. So uh, the certification arrived in 2018, but nothing happened, uh, uh, nothing changed uh, considering what we were doing before. It's only a communication, it's only a logo on the uh, back uh, label. Uh, I think we have another, um, another page of pictures. Perfect. So if you take a look of the inside part of uh, uh, the winery, you will see many hearts. Not only because we put a lot of passion to uh, produce our Sangiovese, but especially because we were, uh, I, I were um, uh, hearing about dreams, about uh, many, many uh, things that uh, you uh, are, are doing to follow something that uh, you want to, to be in the future. So uh, we were very lucky. Uh, I was very lucky because uh, I had the opportunity to do a fabulous uh, job that is uh, uh, to be an export manager in a family where the, the wine is in our blood. But of course, when you are lucky to be in a special place, you need to study to do something unique. So in the northern part of Montalcino, you are unique because you can produce very uh, elegant, very uh, vertical, very, um, it's something like uh, a velvet wine something that is not heavy, but very enjoyable. So to, uh, to underline these uh, special characteristics, uh, we decided to invest, to invest first of all in the vineyards, uh, because 60% uh, of what you uh, do in the in 60% uh, of the result in a wine is what you did in the vineyard. Of course, when the uh, grapes uh, arrive in the winery, we, um, we select our grapes by a selection table. And after we use the cement um, tanks that you can see on the uh, right corner on the top. So the, um, the, the vases are totally open on the top because to give, to, to, to have a fresh wine, so to have a wine with a very long life, but also an enjoyable wine that uh, you, you can love from the beginning, the, um, the impact of the oxygen is very important. So we decided to use cement vases that are totally open on the top. So we don't pump over the wine, but we, wo we work from the, from the top, uh, giving less stress as possible to the wine. So the, the fermentation is there. And after we uh, age our wine, of course, it, it depends of which wine, the Brunello will uh, age for two years in oak, the Rosso di Montalcino is a more friendly wine. So it's a wine that uh, age for six, 10 uh, months in oak. We don't use any barrique because uh, we don't want to cover everything that we did uh, before in the vineyards. So we use uh, uh, medium and big oak. I don't know if uh, Amanda has questions or if you have questions, otherwise we will go uh, to, to speak about the wines. 
Yeah, I'm just keeping an eye on the chat box. Um, so I'll let you know as questions come up, but I think everyone, um, if you haven't already, we're gonna start with the Chianti. So if you wanna talk about that, and then um, the, it's great that we're gonna have one, one wine from each of the properties. So we can discuss kind of the differences um, in those as well. But if you wanna start with the Chianti uh, Violante, that'd be great. Okay, this is, uh, oh, I don't know if, is easy to see it or not my camera we can see it <laughs> well they should also have the bottles at home <laughs> yes but uh, uh so you can read the chianti superiore so yes. chianti superiore means that uh, we did a, a selection of uh, uh, less grapes to produce something that uh, is very very uh, traditional so the um, uh, grapes that we decided to to use are sangiovese and canaiolo this is the old recipe that uh, um, the farmers were using many years ago to produce chianti in uh, in our area of chianti that is the down Siena. So in the Chianti area is very big. There is Chianti Classico that is uh, between Siena and uh, Florence. We are down Chianti Classico and we are presenting you the vintage 2017. 2017 was uh, a difficult year in Italy because uh, uh, we um, the weather <laughs> was not very <laughs> lucky with us. We had a frost uh, the 24th of April and the summer was very, very hot. But we were lucky because uh, um, at the end of August, we had some rain and that was very, very uh, helpful for us to produce good quality. So it was a very small quantity, but the quality was very good. Um, what I can tell you about the Chianti um, Superiore that we produce is that uh, this is a wine in which we don't use any oak. This is the reason why you can feel a very um, Mediterranean uh, Chianti. A Chianti where I like to describe it as a family uh, wine because it's very friendly, it's an important wine and this is the reason why we, uh, if you take a look to the uh, label, of course uh, you see our crest, so this is the crest that you find in all our labels with the name of my mom around, Donatella Cinelli Colombini, and one dove that is flying away up, means that uh, if you start to do something, you need to do your best and try to obtain more and more all the time. But next to the logo, there are four glasses, wine glasses. This is the symbol of Trequanda. We are in the southern part of Chianti and Trequanda is the village very close to our uh, winery, Fattoria del Colle, where we have an agriturismo that is an hotel in the countryside with a restaurant, a cooking class, uh, three uh, swimming pools. So it's a very relaxing place in the middle of Chianti area. Uh, I don't know if it's time to go to... Well, we actually um, had a question. Um, someone was hoping maybe you could explain organic viticulture versus not organic. Maybe just a few of the basics behind that. <laughs> <laughs> a very there, are many, very involved, many rules. <laughs> there are many, many rules to follow. Uh, so... Uh, first of all, uh, what you can use to cultivate uh, um, the vineyards is copper and uh, uh, rame e zolfo. Um, copper and... Uh, hmm. uh, Are you looking for the English translation? <laughs> 
Let me see if I can find Rame Zulfo. I don't know how to. If you can say it, if you can say it in Italian, maybe someone here can speak Italian. Rame Zulfo. <laughs> one more time. This is Italian. Mm. Copper is one, but uh, okay. In any case, uh, it, in any case, it will be easier if you uh, go in internet and uh, try to uh, follow. <laughs> okay, perfect. I think someone was helping us on on the chat. No, no. They just says they understand. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. In any case. Uh, the risk is much more because uh, every time that you don't use any um, uh, chemical product, if it's raining outside, you need to uh, start again everything that you did before. So, of course, uh, it's, um, if you uh, are sure that uh, the future that you, you you believe in the environment, you need to uh, to decide to be organic uh, because you want uh, better grapes. That's all. It's not a communication. It's not a commercial decision, but uh, this has to be a, a a philosophy to produce a better wine. That's all. Great. And I will just add to that as well. Um, it's something I think that many, many European wineries have always essentially practiced organic viticulture, just not gone through the full certification. And I think most well-respected wineries, they don't want to have to add, use pesticides or anything if they don't have to. I mean, you want to be as natural as possible. So even there's many wines um, that don't say certified organic, but they are practicing organic as well. And as you mentioned, it takes a long time to get the certification as well. So we should, I think we should have your 2018s very, totally. very soon. <laughs> um, so we will have the first um, vintages of the, the organic uh, in the States probably I think next week, actually, oh, <laughs> we're keeping you. an eye. The shipping has been taking forever lately with the, um, the issues, but we're really, really excited. But the wines have always been kind of produced that way. It's just now they're certified. What you can use if you are organic is sulfur and the copper. Sulfur. <laughs> okay. <Yes>. Excellent. <laughs> now we know. Um, Great. So I think we can probably talk about the Rosso di Montalcino now. Rosso di Montalcino. Okay. Rosso di Montalcino is the wine dedicated to my family. So in my family, uh, there are me, my mom, and my uh, dad. So uh, this is the reason why uh, instead of one dove, you find three doves that are flying away. Rosso di Montalcino, I don't like very much to describe it as a baby Brunello because the reality is that uh, the Rosso di Montalcino born as a Rosso di Montalcino. Uh, usually Rosso di Montalcino is coming from the younger vineyards that we have. And uh, uh, it's the wine that age for a shorter time in, uh, um, in oak. So the, the blend is totally the same. 100% Sangiovese coming from, from Montalcino. So one of the rules that we have to follow uh, is that we have to use 100% uh, grapes coming from Montalcino. In our um, winery, we use uh, our grapes. Uh, what else? Uh, about the aging, uh, the, uh, the oak, the barrels that we, we use are uh, 700 liters um, big. And uh, um, 
the uh, the reason why i suggest you to uh, enjoy a rosso di montalcino is because you can match it with every kind of food that you think so uh, if you have an invitation from a friend and you don't know what kind of food you will find rosso di montalcino is the perfect gift because you have a um, an important name as Montalcino uh, in, the, in the label, but you also have a wine that uh, can be very friendly with some uh, snacks, if you want, with uh, some pizza, with uh, uh, a steak, if you want, and uh, also with, uh, um, with a seafood uh, soup, so uh, doesn't matter if you uh, if of course if if you have a piece of fish uh, cooked with lemon, <laughs> probably a white wine will be better. <laughs> but <laughs> if you are thinking about a red wine, the uh, the Rosso di Montalcino as well as the, um, the Chianti Superiore that uh, I was describing before are two wines uh, that uh, uh, you can consider or uh, for, uh, for uh, a meal, for all the meal, or to start it if you want to celebrate something, thinking to open a Brunello after. So usually, if you want to know more about Sangiovese in Montalcino, you start with uh, Rosso di Montalcino and little by little you arrive to uh, Brunello, that is a wine that uh, uh, will give you the opportunity to, to play, because uh, you can have fun with a bottle of Brunello now. Uh, enjoying a, a, an important evening, or you can keep the bottle for 10, 20 years. And uh, this is the magic opportunity that the Sangiovese in Montalcino can give uh, to us, to the people that are producing wine in Montalcino. So I just saw in a couple things in the chat. So one, um wanted to expand on the comment of some people don't have negative reactions when having organic wine. And I can answer that if you want, the Alante. Mm -hmm. um, so just very basically, um, unfortunately, in the wine world, there's a lot of additives that you can put in your wine. Um, and anything that you're adding that's not natural, people can have many reactions. I think the number one thing that people usually have a reaction to is sulfites, added sulfites. Um, but there's also a lot of histamines in wine as well. So the less you add to your wine, the more natural it is. It's just like any sort of agricultural product that you would have organic. Um, so hopefully that addressed that. But also um, someone was hoping that maybe you could speak about some food pairings for the Chianti uh, and the Rosso del Montecino. I was telling it before, but in general, mm. Thinking about the food that you can find in uh, United States, I think that uh, for this, it could be a hamburger, it could be, um, as I told you, depend on the weather that uh, you have. But if you can stay, I, I like to um, taste the wine around uh, um, 16 degrees, so a little bit more fresh. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have some cheese, it could be cheese. So if you, um, if you want to organize uh, a simple uh, dinner, you can go to the supermarket and buy different kinds of uh, cheeses and some salame. It could be a spicy salame. It could be what else? Maybe a salad 
is not the perfect uh, um, combination, but if you have uh, uh, what else? Uh, meat, of course, uh, it will be perfect. Uh, also, something if you if you are a vegetarian. If you think about something in which uh, you, something that you cook with some spices could be very, very nice. If you think about a barbecue, I think, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm getting hungry, I'm getting hungry. It's dinner time here in the US. <laughs> not, not here, but... <laughs> The one, one thing also about some of the food, so everybody's package um, got included um, a little charcuterie board. So there's some lomo, there's some duck prosciutto. Oh, fantastic. Salami. So I would recommend um, with both of the red wines is to sort of, you know, have a little piece of each of the foods and just kind of make your own assessment on stuff. Um, there's also um, a violante, we gave them also um, an aged piece of Parmesan. No? So uh, that is also included. So they have some things to sort of nibble on and try. So throughout the evening, I would certainly highly suggest everybody just kind of try a little bit of each and you'll find that maybe the duck or shoot might work better with the Chianti and maybe the Lomo, which has got a little bit more earthiness, a little bit more richness, could pair up a little bit better with like the Rosa de Moncuccino, but um, sort of touching on the food and some of the organic uh, notes. Um, you know, we get asked all the time when people come into the shop for, food recommendations. So one thing that I always sort of preach to individuals is always sort of like the weight of your food to the weight of your wine. So back in the day, it was always like, you know, white meat, white wine, red meat, red wine. That, that was, yeah, that was 25 years ago. So, you know, it's really dependent on the sauces and the flavor um, on how they're marinated and what they're seasoned with. But typically, you know, like Chianti's and Italians and Rosso's that are high in acid, you know, they typically pair up nicely with foods with acidity. I mean, of course, red sauces and anything with tomatoes would be delicious with anything that's based with Sancho base. But ideally, I always tell people the weight of your food to the weight of your wine. And uh, I think someone did touch on the temperature of the wines. Uh, yeah, 60 degrees here in the U.S. is ideal. I know people say room temperature, but Nowadays, room temperature in the U.S. is 72 degrees. And Too warm. It's cellar. Room temperature should be cellar temperature. <laughs> That's what we should say. <laughs> right. Cellar temperature is 55. And we suggest you know, at least 45 <laughs> minutes for them to open up and breathe. So they typically will hit about that 60 to 62 degree weather. Yeah, and I think maybe a lot of people don't realize that a little bit of chill on your red wines can really benefit and bring out the acidity in the red. So we just always think about chilling our whites. Um, but just a little chill on the reds really helps showcase and bring out the freshness to it. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, um, Violante, do you also maybe want to mention, I don't think you did, but um, about there's different clones of Sangiovese, because I know you talked about if you want to start with Sangiovese and Montalcino, but Montalcino has its own specific clone of Sangiovese, kind of, or I mean, there's different clones throughout Tuscany. Not all Sangiovese is the same. The clone is the same. The clone is the same, but in time after time, of course, for the specific characteristic yes, of for the Montalcino, right. now the clone that we have in Montalcino is different, but the, the, the family, the um, DNA is, is totally the same. So uh, if you think about the difference between the clone that we have in um, Fattoria del Colle and in Casato Prime Donne, uh, the reality is that uh, is the soil, is the weather, is uh, uh, the blend, because we decided to produce 100% uh, uh, Sangiovese in uh, Montalcino and to do the blends in uh, Fattoria del Colle. So this is the reason why our wines are different. And of course, uh, uh, if you if you want to um, to be close to your clients, you need to do something different. You you are speaking about uh, uh, many different wines that you can find in Italy in Tuscany. So of course, not only the the oak 
uh, is uh, something that uh, can give uh, the, um, the taste, a different taste to the wine, but the, the, the main uh, place where you, you, you produce a different uh, wine is, is the vineyard. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, could be possible could, could be possible that for the weather that uh, now we, we have two wines with the same vintage but if you have different wines from Tuscany both of us uh, both of them um, from uh, two different wineries but both of them are in Montalcino, could be possible that even if the clone is the same and they are Sangiovese as well, they are different because uh, the soil from a part to another of Montalcino could be very different. The, uh, the climate could be very different. Few, few days ago, we had uh, a frost, uh, unfortunately, and I promise you that uh, uh, it was not the same everywhere in Montalcino. Also in Tuscany, it was not the same. So of course uh, you need to, uh, to take a look. You need to take care of your baby uh, in a different way. So you need to listen at what uh, the vineyard is, uh, is asking and you need to protect uh, the vineyard, uh, considering uh, what the vineyard is asking to to have. Great. Um, I'm just checking to see how much more time we have. Um, so really seven quick. minutes. Great. Yeah. So we can we can keep talking a little bit. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of comments on your glasses, by the way, Yolanda. Everybody loves your uh, they love your spectacles. You know? <laughs> Thank you. I said the Violante glasses that are iconic. <laughs> no, 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 Amanda. <laughs> we need to organize something like this during the day because <laughs> I, I, I don't like how I, I'm managing it. <laughs> I'm too, it's too late. <laughs> I think everyone is really enjoying everything and they're they're really all planning a trip to Tuscany now, which I think they all need to come. Everyone needs to come visit a wine spa. So I think they need to come. What, uh, what I can tell you is that, uh, uh, especially now that uh, we are looking at uh, many pictures, uh, dreaming to travel again, uh, you need to find the place where you, you want to go to learn, but not to learn as when you go to uh, school. When you, you come in our place, we want to uh, welcome you uh, as, uh, uh, how to say, uh, everything is authentic. So if you think about the house of the uh, grandpa, grandma, where everything is the same and you, you are in a very relaxing place, very close to Rome, very close to Florence, Siena, and uh, you need your time because of course, uh, uh, I don't know uh, what was the condition in which uh, you were living, but uh, uh, in Italy it's very common that you are looking to, to go to the countryside because you want to enjoy everything that you have uh, around you and everything is green, uh, you can be free. Uh, we decided to have a, a green garden with a wild Toscan salad. So we <laughs> are taking care of uh, uh, something that uh, has to be very natural and uh, you, you need to be free. And uh, if you want, you, you can visit the, the historical building where uh, my parents uh, live, where we have some uh, uh, secrets. So something that the farmers were, uh, were living 
uh, in the house and uh, not only the wine experts can understand but also the, the children and also the people that uh, they probably at the moment they don't know um, a lot about wine but they are curious and they, they want to know more they can taste our olive oil they uh, they can match toscan food with uh, wine and have time even if we we have to be in our room at 10 <laughs> in italy now <laughs> So this is the only rule that we had to follow. But if you're at your property, it's no problem. That's perfect. You have everything there you need. It's beautiful. You have your wine, the restaurants there. You the can spa, take your tennis. bottle of wine and go to the you room. You just take it back and go to your room. You're fine. <laughs> so. But I did want to uh, mention how you said, um, just expand on how you said when, people come to learn um, as someone who's been in the wine industry for a long time. And Victor can attest to, as I mentioned earlier, you can read and I can go to your website and I can read about the wine, but you really don't fully understand until you go there and experience the full picture of the, not only just the grape growing in the vineyards, but the philosophy and the families. And it really gives you this kind of full, full sense. And every time I go on a wine trip, um, I love the wines going in and then I really love them coming out. And I feel like an advocate for, for who I have visited and um, just because you are that much more knowledgeable and whether you're trying to learn or not, you'll learn something there always. <laughs> yes, has to be a, if you play, if you have fun, you will remember more things that if you think to uh, study. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, it will be better and of course uh, we we want to see different things so we want to uh, go in in the uh, in the place where you, you you can you can relax you you can be free and this is uh, what we are trying to uh, to do to be to be ready to welcome uh, again all the uh, the people that will uh, like to 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 come and visit us. Hopefully soon. <laughs> we we hope. <laughs> so so what is the travel right now to Italy from you know from individuals from the U.S. Is it allowed? I mean, are you guys seeing tourism uh, at all from the U.S. market? Mm -hmm. You, I think you you are in a better condition than us because uh, uh, only my in my family only my grandmother and mm -hmm. my father received the vaccine, so uh, we need to wait. So the the thing that we um, decided to. Uh, to do is to organize uh, all the visits uh, outside. So we organize the tastings uh, outside. We have new uh, um, trekking in the vineyards. We, we have uh, many um, uh, walking tours uh, to show the um, uh, piece of arts that we have in the vineyards uh, um, around Casato Prime Donne because we, we give an award to a, a woman. <laughs> it's a good time to have technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, no. That did some unity. Uh, every September, every September, we, we give this award. Uh, we gave the award to Samantha Cristoforetti that uh, went to the space. She, she is the first European uh, woman that went to the space. We gave this award to uh, Carla Fendi, and I'm sure that you know the Fendi bags. Oh. <laughs> so when she decided to uh, sold the company, 
she uh, dedicated a big part of her time and her money to the small village that uh, uh, where she was born in the south of uh, um, Italy because uh, she decided to leave her village better in a better condition than uh, the, the village that she uh, she found when she was born. So it's a um, uh, it's a message that you have to uh, follow. So the, the 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 people, the other ladies, uh, has to understand that if you have a, a dream, maybe you don't want to go to the space, but it could be even uh, easier. <laughs> <laughs> you have to follow your dream and uh, so when you come to Catato Prime Donne uh, there are some uh, um, monuments uh, some artistic uh, uh, piece of art uh, that you you can see next to the vineyards and next to them there are uh, some uh, prize arts written by the, the winners of the, the premio. So it's something different. Well, thank you, Violante. I don't mean to cut you off. I know that they have to jump into the ceremony <laughs> work, but um, I want to speak on behalf of everybody. I mean, it's honestly a true pleasure listening to you. Um, I think everybody's probably smiling cheek to cheek because there's so <laughs> much like joy and happiness coming from you. And it's a uh, it's inspiring as a winemaker myself to listen to you and we're so thankful uh, for you to spend time with us and I think uh, I know that I love the wines from the minute that I tasted them years ago and I uh, hope that many more people here in the U.S. and especially in the state of Virginia will keep supporting you and your family and drinking your wines and sharing the passion throughout everyone you know but um, and thank you everybody Amanda thank you so much for helping me put this all together and getting everybody sort of dialed in and of course all the participants i mean without you guys being here and listening to you know our stories and uh, and tasting wines with us because it's so difficult to do on a thursday night <laughs> we're also uh, so very happy to have everybody here all the attendees everybody from the libby um touching on with katie parks you know go out there donate support um we're still going to continue to honor any wines that are purchased from tonight's event um we still will continue to donate the 20% proceeds. We'll honor that through May 9th. So anybody who's looking for uh, some Mother's Day gifts and things like that would be a great opportunity to support uh, a beautiful family and great wines. Um, call the shop, mention George Mason University, we'll put you on the list. But um, other than that, I know we're running late, but uh, I believe also Katie Parks wants um, me to share. Uh, make sure everybody stays on. Uh, for the keynote speaker and the Libby Awards will follow, I think, right after I stop talking. But thank you so much for everything. And uh, I hope all of you guys have a, a wonderful evening for the rest of the night. Go to bed, Violante. <laughs> yes, it's time for Violante to go to bed. Sweet dreams, Violante. <laughs> <laughs> Grazie. Buonanotte. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I hope to see you all in Tuscany soon. <laughs> We're going to get your information and we'll share it with everyone. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Viamonte. And thank you, Victor, and everyone for having us. It was a real pleasure. And everybody stay on for the uh, Withy Awards. That's going to follow under us. I'm sure um, Katie Parks or someone will transfer you guys into that room. So, ciao, bello. Ciao. <laughs>
does. If there's one thing I ask you take away from this, it's a little bit more conviction for what you're doing. It's a bit more positivity and rewarding towards and of yourself for how hard you work. Looking forward has never been easier. It's important to live in the present and recognize what one has accomplished, but it's also important to know where one is heading and why. That decision isn't always easy. In Eastern culture, there's a concept of Dharma, one's life's true calling. The blending of passion and privilege doesn't always equate to what we are destined to do. Oftentimes we must follow what is right. In this case, becoming an entrepreneur was not what I wanted to do necessarily, but what I was called to do, help people solve problems. Okay, I may have fibbed a little bit. There's one more thing that I will ask you to take away from today. Stop remattering, invalidating the decisions you've made because they mattered at the time and they were what you needed at that moment. Convictions in the choices that we make as women will ignite us and pave our way to success. My journey as Brit, the tech turned sommelier and entrepreneur were accidental. My parents didn't own a vineyard. I didn't study horticulture. I studied finance and economics. But as someone whose knees and legs were always scraped from playing in the grass on my family's farm, and climbing trees in the backyard, I always loved nature. It wasn't until a friend decided to get married that I was at my first tasting room in Virginia and found myself daydreaming about the experience. From the winemaking process to the tasting, to chatting with the winemaker, I was hooked and I wanted to expect to extend that experience to everyone. My story was simple. Translate the concepts and theories of wine into bite-sized pieces that people get through storytelling, passion, technology, and my own two hands. I am now a level one sommelier accredited through the Court of Master Sommeliers. And my favorite wines are German Riesling and Spätburgunder, which is German Pinot Noir. In the wine world, it's innovations like audio and visual and robust content that you can use to purchase the wine that really matter. In fact, image has never mattered more than now in the wine industry. 52% of millennials purchase wine based on the label, indicating that the industry was hungry for knowledge. I am now Britt Campbell, the founder of Britt's Wine, a mobile first consumer tasting app and platform that empowers wineries to engage, understand and retain the next generation of wine consumer. After 12 years in the technology industry, I quit my lucrative job in software to focus on my true passion and calling, helping winery itself perhaps its number one looming challenge. The changing demographics of the wine business consumer was shifting at a much higher rate than innovation. With the shift to other products that were being introduced by new legislation, health-focused products, and craft beer and spirits, the wine industry was being disrupted. We were uniquely situated to help independent winemakers and small wineries ensure there continues to be a market for their wine, even in the face of growing competition and changing consumer tastes. The combination of mobile, power data analytics, and the shift from baby boomers and Gen X to millennials and future generations was the perfect storm. Let's rewind a bit. I graduated from George Mason in January of 2005. I actually stayed another semester to complete a minor in economics and start my career in management consulting. By 2008, I had moved to Silicon Valley just in time for the recession. Talk about timing. Well, it turned out that my timing wasn't all that bad. Because of my finance degree, I was able to pick up consulting work as a revenue accountant, deploying revenue recognition software 
which was extremely lucrative given the state of the market and desire for companies like Facebook, Yahoo, Blizzard Activision to maximize every penny of revenue that they brought through the door. Long story short, I had the experience and the expertise to receive funding for my business model. As I was told by endless venture capitalists and angel investors, in fact, I raised a small friends and family round and was able to launch the app. I was off to events to pilot. I partnered with several wineries to capture consumer taste preferences in real time at the event. We even collected some great raw data and I received valuable feedback from one of my customers that is absolutely critical to launching any product. I'll state a few in shorthand because that's how I jotted them down. One, nobody wanted to take out their phone. They were too busy tasting wine and talking with the winemakers. Two, person that was trying to download couldn't download. The internet Wi-Fi was slow. It took about one and a half minutes for someone to get to the wine they were trying. Three, frustrating, couldn't get people off their phones. This last anecdote was actually from the winery that was frustrated they couldn't get the person off their phone to listen and have a conversation. So as it turns out, we had a little chicken and the egg problem. It's a very classic problem within the technology industry. Do we get the wineries first or do we get the consumers? We started to pivot by looking into licensing devices for each winery with the preloaded app that was easy to change based on each user. We also had a few other uh, ingredients for our recipe, which I haven't formally launched yet. There's still a secret. And just as we were starting to work on deploying our new strategy, the world as we knew it changed forever. So we pivoted again. Our app doubles quite nicely as a marketplace app. Consumers can order wine directly from our winery partners and all of the wines are hand selected by wine experts. This brought in hundreds of orders for small business wineries that were struggling over the last year to stay in business. Do not be afraid to pivot. It's the only way that you will be successful long-term. In closing, business is not just about hard work and innovation, it's about evolution. Our young women are growing up and becoming leaders. They are now able to pave the way for our future. We are building businesses and impacting people everywhere, from fashion to wine. A glimmer of a passion is now your new business model. In the fashion world, it's your favorite pair of 1990s biker shorts, now manifested in the business world as vintage because a little person grew up and brought back a trend that is now a viable product. We need to continue to support little girls' dreams. We need to apply the same amount of confidence in our female and non-binary leaders as we do our male leaders. And finally, we must continue to fund and support women-led businesses because without these blurred lines, we are just creating more silos and we cannot maximize our ability to innovate. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. Hey everyone, it is Monica Jansen live this time instead of in a pre-recorded video. Um, so I just wanted to give a few updates. First, I wanna thank um, Victor. I wanna thank Violante. Um, she was up until 1.30 in the morning her time and so much amazing energy. And Amanda, of course, that was fabulous, wonderful. Um, the wine is fantastic. 
I've had three glasses and I'm feeling fantastic as well. Um, so I hope everyone is having a great time. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update on fundraising. Um, we have raised $870 for our scholarship fund um, through registration tonight. So all of you here, you are contributing to these wonderful um, female business students. You got to hear from two of them tonight, Celia and, um, oh my God, I'm forgetting the other one. Anyway, three glasses of wine. Um, Celia and Christina. Um, <laughs> thank you, Katie is telling me in chat. Um, yeah, so $870, that's great. So keep uh, texting. Um, Aaron and Katie have been popping into chat. Um, text the number four, Wibby, W-I-B-I, to 41444. And let's see, next up is um, the Wibby Awards. And then we are going to hear from um, the Dean of the School of Business at Mason, Maury Piperell, and then I'll be back. Good evening. I hope everyone is having a great time tonight. And I hope you've also picked up some information related to our Italian wines that we sample. I'd like to thank each of you for your generosity in supporting this event this evening. Supporting Women in Business Initiatives allows us to be able to give our students a hands up in completing their education. And it means so much to each of them, as well as it's so important to our community in strengthening all of the resources we have. If you were not able to get out your cell phones earlier, to donate to our student scholarships. We have one last opportunity right now. So let's go out with a bang. Grab your phones and join me in texting 4WIBI to 41444. That's scrolling across the bottom of the screen as well. This will allow you to donate to the Women in Business Scholarship Endowment. Your gift of any amount will make a lasting impact. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Good evening, my name is Nicole Washington. I am the George Mason University Presidential Partner with a long history in business and angel investing. And I'm thrilled to join the Women in Business Initiative alongside all of you this evening as I announce the second annual Weeby Award recipients. The Women in Business Initiative here at George Mason University School of Business serves as an access point to impact students, a network full of innovation and collaboration, and a provider of business inspiration in support of women in the workplace. The annual Wibby Award accomplishes this by elevating the advisory board and our Mason community as an influential leader an organization specifically to progress the success, support, and accessibility for women in business. Tonight, we will recognize five awardees under four Wibby Awards, Wibby Ambassador of the Year, Wibby Business of the Year, Wibby Student of the Year, and Wibby Woman of the Year. Let's get started. The Wibby Ambassador of the Year Award recognizes an individual who has been a strong advocate for our women in business initiative and women owned businesses. They are a member of our Mason community who inspires progress, action, innovation, and creates a real impact for women in business. Tonight, we are thrilled to recognize Victor Mendez, owner of Vienna Bittner, as the Wibby Ambassador of the Year. Victor Mendez has been the owner of Vienna Vintner, a boutique wine store located locally in Vienna, Virginia for over 22 years. And he started producing his own wine under the brands of Vix and Straight Out of Paso in 2016. Victor is known throughout the community for his intuitive palate and customer service but more importantly, for his collaboration with many local organizations in their fundraising efforts. Victor has shown unwavering support for George Mason University 
and the Women in Business Initiative since 2016. The time he volunteers, his expertise, and the generous funds he provides directly impact the success of WIBI. He worked with the Mason team to develop the inaugural annual wine reception fundraiser concept that has since raised over $26,000 for the Women in Business Scholarship Endowment and is continuing tonight. Victor has made the annual Women in Business event unique, wildly successful, and sophisticated. Victor is a champion of the Wibby mission and the awards committee is thrilled to recognize him tonight. Congratulations, Victor. Hi, everybody. My name is Victor Mendez, the owner at the Vienna Victor since 1998. I'm very honored to be here accepting this award, which I was completely shocked to receive, um, but I'm very thankful. Uh, I want to really thank the um, George Mason School of Business. I would love to also thank the Women uh, Advisory Board, who I've worked closely with over the last five years uh, in regards to uh, some of these tastings that we posted with you guys. Um, but uh, really just honored, very thankful, can't wait to see you guys live to do our tasting next year. Um, and uh, this couldn't have come at a better time. Recently single, this is going to come everywhere with me on every date on my table. So anyway, thank you guys so much. I have some champagne to drink tonight to celebrate and I hope you guys are as well. Good night. The Wibby Business of the Year Award recognizes a woman-owned business that is affiliated with the Mason community and creates impact, innovation, and inspiration for women in business. Tonight, the Wibby Business of the Year Award goes to Yuck Old Paint, owned by Rhea Jean Linster. Yuck Old Paint is the first company on the East Coast to create a landfill diversion operational model to reuse and recycle EPA class number three hazardous waste. Woman owned and operating in a male dominated space, Rhea's business serves nine states from Connecticut down to Virginia and supports 22 employees. Yuck Old Paints, safe and eco-friendly innovation also supports local communities to find new homes for paint through professional muralists, school and community theaters. The Wibby Awards Committee is glad to recognize this woman owned and alumna owned business that is supporting a better world and community. Congratulations, Rhea and Yuck Old Paint. Hi, I'm Rhea Jean Linster, and I would like to thank very much the GMU School of Business Women's Business Initiative Advisory Board for granting me and my business the Business of the Year Award. As a 1992 GMU Patriot alum, I am just so honored and tickled to death um, to be a part of the GMU alum, family, and community. What it means for me to win this award is simply this. We are in an era right now where technology, software developments is the um, sexy uh, way in which investments are being made, grant monies are given, and recognitions and awards are being provided. My company is not technology-based. We, we are not a software company. But what we are doing is re-engineering the way in which we manage, handle, process, and keep out of the landfills in Virginia and up and down the East Coast, the chemicals and hazardous waste materials generated from our homes, commercial buildings, military bases, federal agencies, and stadiums. George Mason University, Women of the Advisory Board, I can't thank you enough for acknowledging the hard work that me and my team have been doing. Thank you very much. The Wibby Student of the Year Award recognizes our two women in business student scholars. These students represent the next generation of women in business leaders and truly inspire us all. Tonight, the Wibby Student of the Year Awards go to Celia, a current information systems and technology management student, and Christina, a current MBA student. Celia intends to pursue a career in the private sector following graduation, and she enjoys on-campus activities like community service events for future business leaders of America. She has worked hard to maintain her GPA to achieve her career goals, 
and set up a future for continued success. Christina currently works as an assistant professor in a physician assistant program, one with a specific mission to educate students who wish to provide care to underserved communities. She knows that her MBA course studies will provide her with invaluable leadership skills and expertise so she can educate her students, including many women who will improve the lives of thousands of others in communities across this country. Congratulations to both of you. Hello everyone, my name is Celia Miranda. I'm a sophomore and an ISAW major here at Mason. I just wanna take some time to thank the WIBI or the School of Business, Women in Business Initiative Advisory Board for this award and scholarship that I have re received. Um, it has really helped me put into perspective what I've wanted to do. It's let me evolve my interest, put some more time into different organizations such as FBLA, which I was a board member of. And I just really wanted to thank those at the George Mason University School of Business for helping me apply for this scholarship and giving me the guidance I always need. Thank you so much and everyone have a great day. Hello, I'm Christina Snyder, MBA student at George Mason University. I want to thank the Women in Business Initiative Advisory Board for selecting me as this year's Women in Business Award recipient. I am honored, humbled, and delighted to receive this award from this great group of women and leaders. This type of support is what makes GMU so special. Thank you for this. Thank you to Nicole Washington. Thank you to my friends and fellow cohort members who are in attendance tonight because I could not have done this without you and to everyone who has supported me on this endeavor. Thank you. The Wibby Woman of the Year Award recognizes a female professional who has a minimum of 10 years of experience in their industry, is a member of our Mason community, and creates impact, innovation, and inspiration for women in business. Tonight, we are thrilled to recognize Courtney Spaeth, CEO of Growth Period, as the Wibby Woman of the Year. Courtney Spaeth, a current member of the School of Business Dean's Council and Government Contracting Advisory Board, is one of the nation's foremost experts in business development and corporate growth. She has widespread experience, having worked in the White House, the Defense Department, and three of the largest defense contractors. Courtney founded Growth Period in 2007, which has a proven track record of helping companies achieve intelligent expansion through business development and provides transaction advisory service to private equity firms and companies, both foreign and domestic. The Greater Washington Board of Trade shares that Courtney has unmatched commitment and drive as an invaluable partner in their work to build a strong and more inclusive economy in the Greater Washington region. The Wibby Awards Committee recognizes Courtney as an impressive businesswoman and a fierce proponent of women supporting each other as she has leveraged her success to serve as a champion for other women executives and companies to prosper. Congratulations, Courtney. Hi, everybody. My name is Courtney Spaeth, and I'm CEO of Growth Period. And I wanted to thank everyone for this tremendous award. And in particular, thank you goes to the School of Business Women and Business Initiative Advisory Board at George Mason University. This is an amazing award, especially in a year where so many business owners have struggled. And I think this belongs not just to me, but to all women entrepreneurs who in the last year have managed to keep their families together, their businesses afloat, and continue to succeed. And I'm very honored to receive it on behalf of all of them. Uh, I'd also like to thank my family, my husband and children, and particularly give a shout out to David DeQuino, Ed Bursoff, and Irma Becerra, who got the ball rolling on this wonderful accomplishment. It means a lot to be a woman entrepreneur. And I think especially given the circumstances and, and the last you know, few months that we've all lived through, I really appreciate the community uh, recognizing women and women in business. Thank you. Let's give one more virtual cheer and round of applause for all of our 2021 Wibby Awardees. This is only the second annual Wibby Awards ceremony 
and the committee was thrilled to have so many high quality nominations. The committee hopes to see all nominees in the awards pool again in the future as we all continue to recognize and celebrate our Mason community. On behalf of George Mason University, thank you for supporting the next generation of women in business leaders, and thank you for joining us for the Wibby Awards this evening. A very good evening to you all. My name is Maury Piper, and I'm the Dean of the School of Business at George Mason. I'm very happy to join the Women in Business Initiative Advisory Board this evening for the annual fundraiser in support of their wonderful student scholarships. Congratulations, Wibby, and congratulations to all the awardees this year. And big thank you to presidential partner, Nicole Washington, for hosting these awards. I would also like to thank the board for your dedication to supporting our School of Business students and to advancing women in the workplace. And at the same time, I'd like to thank our wider network of sponsors, supporters, School of Business faculty, staff, students, and alumni, and thank all of you who've joined us this evening. I'd then like to pass it over to Monica Jansen, who is our former Wibby chair and our MC for this evening, and she will be joining us for a live fundraising update. Monica, over to you. Thank you, Dean. Um, I am so excited to share with you guys how much we have raised. Um, Katie just texted me. This is pretty incredible. Um, through text to give and generous donations through registration, you have raised $3,500 for the Women in Business Scholarship Endowment. That is incredible. Thank you so, so much. This means so much to all the young ladies who are coming behind Celia and Christina who need our financial support to make their uh, college dreams come true and go out and conquer the world, which I certainly think Sully and Christina are gonna do. Um, so before we go, I know it's 8.01, um, real quick, um, a couple of more things to go over. Tonight, we have a really fun door prize giveaway. It's a gift card donated by School of Business alumna, Avania, owner of Baked a la Carte. Baked a la carte is a licensed home bakery specializing in custom designed French cakes and desserts for all occasions, serving the greater metro, um, greater Washington area. Uh, please email baked a la carte at gmail.com to place an order. Uh, she looks forward to bringing a French touch to all your celebrations. Thank you, Ava. So uh, we have randomly selected a winner from attendees this evening. You will receive a gift card via email. Congratulations to Mary Lee Blake. A member of our team will be in touch with you. Um, again, I would just want to give one final shout out to our fantastic sponsors. Um, thank you to our event partner and catering sponsor, Atlantic Union Bank. And thank you to our supporters, Vienna Vintner. We love you, Victor. Uh, the fer Fermented Pig, Baked a la Carte, Mason Music Productions, and Mason Event Services this evening would not have been possible without your generous support. Um, I don't know about you. Um, I think just based on chat, we are all planning a trip to Tuscany as soon as things open up out there. Um, thank you again for coming tonight. Thank you for your generous donations. Thank you for supporting the Women in Business Initiative at George Mason University's School of Business. Have a great night.